I'm going to do mine in two parts. Uh, I generally, you know, fly through the charts pretty quickly. So I wanted to take some time and, and make a, a shorter segment about all the details of somewhat of why I've chosen them and, and what we're looking at. So when you see these every month, you'll have a better understanding of what we're looking at. Here's a guide to our monthly charts. So first of all, we typically look at as a long-term trend, we use the, it's about a six month look at the advanced decline in the line of the New York Stock Exchange. So the New York Stock Exchange, it's has, you know, certain stocks are listed on that exchange. And this takes all of them and says, how many are going up? How many are going down? And then we put a blue line, that's a 55 day moving average on it, just to kind of get the trend of it. So if this is trending down as it is, uh, that's generally a negative negative feel for the overall environment. So this is our own calculation. We call this the midterm cycle or the midterm trend. Uh, this is our own calculation based on the New York Stock Exchange highs and lows, not just the advancing declines each day, but, but how many are hitting new highs, new lows, and a couple of other factors that give us a sense of how the market's acting. So as, as I always say, it was when this is rising and above the, the zero line, that means money is coming into the market and accelerating. When it's coming down, money is still coming in. It's just decelerating. And then we have below this zero line, money is coming out of the market and accelerating. Uh, when this is going up, money is still coming out, but it's decelerating. Right? So we have a positive money flow, negative money flow. And that gives you a sense of where money is coming in and out of the market. And that typically will follow trends. Uh, this year has been a little bit different in that how that acts, but that's ultimately what this is uh, uh, trying to achieve is showing where money is flowing. Uh, next we have, I typically throw a 21 day moving average on most charts. So that's just to give you a quick understanding, that's this blue line. Uh, any chart that I have here, the 21 day moving average just shows the last 21 days of the price movement uh, summarized into that blue line. And the reason why I do that is 21 days is the typical one month of, of trading days. There are 21 trading days in a month, even though there are typically 30 days uh, in a month, but there are 20 to 21 trading days most months. So that's just is a good way to understand monthly how things are going on. It's a nice medium way to look at at charts. On our sectors, positive negative sectors, I have one of these for the major indexes, the sectors for the bond market for commodities. I really just show the sectors, although I'll occasionally bring in the other if something interesting is happening. Um, so what, what's happening here is the left and right, the positive versus negative is coming on based on the average directional index. John Carter, a big trader, uh, refers to them as who's in control. Are the buyers in control or the sellers in control? So if the buyers are in control, it's going to be on this side of the column. And if the sellers are in control, it's on the right side. And that's just big picture. And then the ADX plays into that. The number is really not relevant. The ADX trend is though. And what that's looking at is when the ADX number is rising. And, and you don't have to know what this is. But if it's rising three days in a row, I have a yes. This is the only one that's doing it. Uh, and when that's rising and it's on the negative side, that means it's a negative trend is confirmed. Right. It's, it's a, is it has the trend been confirmed? So if we're on this side, we have a yes, that's a negative confirmed trend by that indicator. Uh, right here, we have no confirmed trend, even though it's on the positive side. And that's, that's really what that's showing you. Here's just the standard MACD, MACD. It's the uh, moving average convergence divergence. It's, it takes a couple of moving averages and, and gives a sense of are they getting further away from each other or closer to each other or, or crossing. It turns red or green if it's had a crossover, a change in sentiment in the last three days. So right now we've got a green dot. So in the last three days, basic materials show to improve, but we'll have to see if that holds up. Uh, and then it just kind of tells you how for how many days it's been uh, on that indication. And then, of course, the tickers are, are these. These are all the sectors of the S&P. And the reason we, why we like to break up the sectors is, is if you take all of these 11 sectors and, and weighted them correctly, you have the S&P 500. So by looking at 11 pieces of it, you can get a sense for how much of that is actually doing okay and how much is not uh, on, a, on a fairly active basis. It's neat to see underneath what's, what's shifting back and forth. And then finally, this is new. I haven't shown it much lately, but it's something we do look at a lot. It's called a relative rotation graph. And this is all the sectors again, but when it's in this box down here, it's usually lagging. And, and what I'm looking at against, I should have said, is, is the, uh, the one to three month T-bill. Uh, some consider it the risk-free rate. So we're comparing it to each sector just to evil. Right now it's even, you know, really makes no return. So where is it landing? So if it's up in here, if it's moving from here to here, it's improving. If it's here to here, this is leading over here. So these two sectors are technically leading, but then they fall down here and that's weakening and then they're lagging. They tend to run in this circle. Uh, kind of funny off the edge, we have two, two that are so skewed, they're off the chart, 
right now, but just an interesting cycle to watch things move as the market moves as well. So you can watch as this kind of turns around here, the market will probably start selling off more directly. So hopefully that's, that's helpful. That's a big overview of the charts that we look at every month. 